Good evening. On behalf of Bishop Jenke, the Bishop of Peoria, Bishop Liu, the coadjutor Bishop of Peoria, and Father Bill Miller, the rector of this church, I welcome you to the Cathedral of St. Mary of the Immaculate Conception. I'm Philip Lee. I'm the Director of Divine Worship, as well as the Bishop's Master of Ceremonies. And just a few announcements to help. I say that, but there are actually a lot of announcements. So some announcements to help today's liturgy go more smoothly. Firstly, to the sponsors, and maybe to all those here, what a great responsibility we have today to pray for these confirmants, for these students, to also help them to remain calm throughout this liturgy today. So as we pray during the Mass, please continue to pray for them now as well as afterwards. For the Sacrament of Confirmation, you will be guided up by one of our MCs, pew by pew, to help the spacing. We'll go up one at a time to Father Miller, who will then confirm you. He will confirm you with a Q-tip on the forehead. The sponsors should have your right hand on their right shoulder. Please push them forward to make sure they're forward enough, and to please help make sure the name tags are visible. And again, one of our MCs will guide you out one by one. Flash photography is permitted today, but I ask that you remain in your seats. The opportunity for group photos, as well as individual photos, will be available after the Mass. Due to COVID, there will be no gift or offertory procession today. If you wish to make a gift offering to the cathedral for the benefit and maintenance of the pres and pre preservation of this historic church, baskets will be available to you as you leave the cathedral. For the distribution of Holy Communion, there will be four stations available in the center and one in the balcony. The four stations in the center, the two in the very center, will distribute to those wishing to receive on the tongue. The two just to the sides will only distribute communion to those wishing to receive on the hands. We will ask those seated in the side aisles to go to the back and then come forward in the center aisle to receive first and then the ushers will guide those seated in the center to receive communion as usual. Those in the balcony, a Eucharistic minister will come up and guide you further from up there. As we are a singing community, all of the music for today's liturgy can be found available to you, can be found in the programs available to you in the vestibule, as well as those being passed out by our usher now. Please, if you do not have a program, please raise your hands. Some special announcements to those being confirmed, finally. During the liturgy today, you will be asked some questions before you're confirmed. Those questions will start, do you believe? Your answer should be, I do. It should be a loud, clear I do loudly and clearly enough that all those in this cathedral can hear and all those in the surrounding area can hear as well. You are stating your belief in the faith today. It is your opportunity to do so on your own. So again, when you are asked, do you believe? At the end of that question, your response should be, good, I do. We're going to practice one more time. When you are asked, do you believe? Just one more time for everybody. Do you believe? I do. Wonderful. I know you're a little nervous now. The time will come when to speak up loudly. As we are a singing community, we together will raise our voices to praise God in our opening hymn. 
please rise. good to see God's house full for this wonderful occasion. You will notice who is not here, who we expected, our Bishop Daniel Jenke. Ask for your prayers uh, for him, uh, that he's not able to be here this evening. We pray for him and for all those who deal with chronic pain, infirmity, and just not being able to get around the way they used to. 
as we prepare to enter then, we do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you've shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Graciously pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, O Lord, so that walking in oneness of faith and strengthened by the power of his love, we may come to the measure of the full stature of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Children of Zion, exult and rejoice in the Lord your God. You shall eat and be filled and shall praise the name of the Lord your God because he has dealt wondrously with you. My people shall never more be put to shame and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never more be put to shame. Then afterward, I will pour out my spirit upon all mankind. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Even upon the servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit and I will work wonders in the heavens and on the earth. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because it intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, that the Father will send in my name. He will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Father Rector, on behalf of the priest, deacons, religious, and faithful of the Heart of Peoria Catholic Community and the Galesburg Catholic Community, I am happy to present to you these candidates for the Sacrament of Confirmation. Those to be confirmed, please stand. And I invite you to now turn to the back of the church, turn around. Let us show our congratulations and appreciation for these young people to be confirmed. seated.
What a blessing it is for us to gather in our cathedral for the celebration of the Sacrament of Confirmation here together in the Mother Church of our diocese whose beauty lifts our minds and hearts to God and His glory. We welcome the Galesburg Catholic community that is so near and dear to me, which I was blessed to be pastor for many years. A number of you from the Galesburg parishes I baptized, gave your first communion, and helped take care of your spiritual needs at Costa and our CCD program there. We also welcome the Heart of Peoria Catholic community who are my new responsibility. They are largely from our Hispanic community who have the special privilege of calling the cathedral their home church where they're very active and give a great witness of vitality in practicing their faith. As I think back to my own confirmation, I was trying to remember some of the details. I was a little younger than you, I think sixth or seventh grade. As an aside, I was the shortest kid in my class and I had bangs down to my eyebrows. I know that part is especially hard to believe. And I remember that I was wearing a plaid jacket that my mom had made me. And in those days, the bishop gave us a light slap on the cheek to remind us that it's not always going to be easy to follow Christ and to be a faithful member of his church. You can relax because that's no longer part of the ceremony, but the point is more true than ever that we live in a world that is hostile, even violent, towards those who do not go along with a godless worldview. Now here's one thing that I never forgot about my confirmation. The name that I chose for my confirmation saint. Mine was Saint Michael the Archangel. His importance in my life has grown over the years. And I hope that you will build up a friendship with your confirmation saint, getting to know him or her better and asking for their help. It's good to have friends in high places and to make good use of our connections in heaven. And taking a new name is a sign of beginning a new chapter in your life. The placing of the oil of chrism on your forehead is the visible sign of the gift that you receive today, confirming, strengthening what the Holy Spirit did for you at your baptism, and more closely identifying you with Jesus, who is called Christ, which means anointed one. In him, God the Father calls you, chooses you, and sends you forth to love as you've been loved by him to forgive as you've been forgiven by him, to carry the light of Christ into the darkness of this world. So whatever you may forget later about this evening, I hope that you will always remember that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. God's life is in you. Your true and lasting identity is that you are sons and daughters of God the Father, brothers and sisters of God the Son, and temples of God the Holy Spirit. You have a value and a worth that no one can take from you, but it's also your responsibility to live up to this God-given dignity. Remember that you need the church. It is there that you will most powerfully encounter the Holy Spirit, especially at every Mass and every time you go to confession. Through the teachings of the Church, the Holy Spirit will guide you, comfort you, encourage you, and yes, challenge you. Remember that the Church also needs you. Wherever life takes you, the Catholic Church is your home, and she needs you to be her hands and feet and voice. Everyone here has a unique part to play in God's plan. 
And I can assure you, as all those who have strived to do so, seeking God's will for you is the greatest adventure. Finding God's plan for your life is the greatest discovery. And the Holy Spirit will help you to do both. You know, to renew your baptismal promises, those promises that were made for you, you have the great privilege this evening to make for yourself as you practice. This is something that echoes to the heavens, I believe, and that I believe that has been placed in us the gift of faith will carry you through your life. It will echo out into the world exactly what our world needs. For everything that we see and hear that is dark and negative and bad and seemingly filled with disbelief, there's a world out there that's just waiting for each one of you to show by your words, your actions, and your life, I believe and so can you. So I invite our candidates for confirmation, your sponsors, to please stand. So I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life and baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peter, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Francis, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Peter, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Miguel Arcanjo, peace.
Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Miguel, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.
Please rise. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to God, the Almighty Father, and be of one mind in our prayer, just as faith, hope, and charity, which proceed from his Holy Spirit, are one. For thee, sons and daughters of God, confirmed by the gift of the Holy Spirit, that they may give witness to Christ by lives built on faith and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their parents and sponsors, who led them in faith, that by word and example, they may always encourage them to follow the way of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, together with Francis our Pope, Daniel our Bishop, Louis our Coadjutor Bishop, and all the bishops that gathered by the Holy Spirit, the church may grow in unity of faith and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all men and women of every race and nation, that they may acknowledge the one God as Father, and in the bond of common fellowship, seek his kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those that have died, that they may come to share in the joy of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the continuing purification of the church, its clergy and people, and for religious freedom for Catholics in America and throughout the world, let us say together the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, send to hell Satan and all evil spirits, the crown of the world, seeking the ruin of the souls. Amen. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and willed that through them and their successors, the same spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful. Listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept graciously these your servants, O Lord, together with your only begotten Son, so that signed with his cross and with a spiritual anointing, they may constantly offer themselves to you in union with him and merit each day a greater outpouring of your spirit through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you bestow gifts suited to every season and guide the governing of your church in wonderful ways. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you come unfailingly to her aid so that with a heart always subject to you, she may never fail to seek your help in time of trouble, nor cease to give you thanks in time of joy Christ our Lord and so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you and with joy we proclaim beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out 
for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <laughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, Louis, his brother Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. And freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter on my road, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As a reminder for the distribution of Holy Communion, we will have four stations down here. One station will come up to the balcony, so balcony, stay where you're at. Instructions by the altar server will follow. For those here in the main body, we will have four stations at the front, two in the center and two off to the sides. The two in the center are for receiving communion on the tongue only, and the two on the sides are received for receiving communion on the hands only. We will start with the side aisles and feed them down the back and up the center. Once they have gone, we will have the start in the center. Please follow the usher's instructions. Thank you.
Let us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who've been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all the trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity, foster her growth in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God the Father Almighty bless you, whom he has made his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit, and may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. May his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thank you.
please be seated. Beatrice? Is your mic on? Yes. 